Pod Maverick After Dark. I'm Kirk Henderson, joined as always by fellow editor over at Mavs Moneyball, Josh Bo. We are joining you at 11:35 on Tuesday, March 26th. The Dallas Mavericks just beat the pants off the Sacramento Kings, 132 to 96, in an absolutely massive statement win. Josh Bo, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. It's it's a little late, but second out of a back to back. But we are here for, I guess, what is probably the greatest win of the Maverick season so far. What do you think? It's certainly the most. I, I had a non Mavericks friend reach out to me and basically say, "Wow, you're really celebrating this one." And I'm like, "Man, we've not been able to pull off one of these games that we really, we being the Mavericks, the, the Mavericks have not been able to pull off one of these wins that would make a difference." against a really quality opponent in a while. Now, I could be misspeaking. I'm not remembering any particular games, but this was a chance, a head-to-head chance to go and take the lead in the sixth seed. And the Mavericks went out and took it. And you know what? Yeah, they could fall back on Friday. But for right now, for two solid days, we're going to be able to enjoy this win, enjoy what it means. And, and you know, after the Kings had really kind of you know, thumped the Mavericks in their two earlier season matchups. This one just feels good. It's it's if you can't enjoy regular season basketball for what it is, you know, uh, every great now and again, and wildly overreact to something, then what in the hell are you even doing here? This is this is fun. Yeah, yeah, it was it was fantastic. Um, I mean, don't really know. I mean, there's plenty to talk about, but I mean, they basically did everything that they needed to do um both teams on the second out of a back-to-back kings on a five and seven nights which i didn't even think were allowed anymore right uh, with the NBA, with the way the nba I think is the, Ma- the mavericks have some of that stuff to close out the season because the, they get that second warriors game they got pro- postponed there's some yeah. brutal it just it happens and and sorry <laughs> yeah yeah i know i know i'm just i mean they I mean, they took advantage of of a team that clearly didn't have a lot left in the tank. I mean, we've seen plenty of instances where teams against tired teams don't win by 36 points. So uh, you have to do something right. Um, And apparently this is what it looks like when the new look Mavericks actually make three pointers, uh, which is they look like the greatest team in the history of basketball. Uh, They made 22 threes, which feels like... uh, more threes than they've made in like the last two weeks combined. I know that's not true, but I mean, man, well, every, I, I mean, so to wind it back a little bit, yeah, yeah. It, it's the Matt, you know, you created a flow chart several seasons ago. Like this is not, it, it, it goes back to like the middle of the 2021, 22 season, which the flow chart was essentially are the Mavericks um, hitting their threes. If yes, they look like, you know, the greatest team of all time, and they're going to win a title. If no, they look like a lottery team. And you hate to be that simplistic, but that really was the the formula. They either hit threes or or they lost. Like, that was it. (laughs) And to see the Mavericks have this stretch of games, and it's, it's, I mean, it's eight or nine games where they were shooting under 33%. You were telling me it was like in the high 20s for some of these games, I think. Yeah, they've been under 30%, I think before tonight and they're this little winning stretch yes yes and it's it's really fun to see them go out and grind through some games i mean they they've been scoring at the rim in a way where you know we experienced the dirt mid-range era which was you know the, the 2000s were just different basketball you know i'm sure there are some 80s people in here but like 80s basketball if you go watch 80s and 90s basketball nobody's fucking moving around i'm sorry it's a completely different game than it was 25 30 40 years ago and and watching how these guys score right now 
in the paint at the rim. I mean, 18 dunks against Utah in the first game. They probably had at least 10 in the second game. It's it's really fun watching the Mavericks attack the rim. So there was there was going to be a game where the lid came off the basket and guys who aren't great at three-point shooting become three-point shooters, even if only for a night. And the fact that the Mavericks shot above 50% from three, if you're going to do that, most games you're going to – and shoot at volume because they took nearly <laughs> – um, of their 92 shots, 39 of them were threes. So it's, it's like if you're going to shoot 45% of your volume from distance and you're going to hit half your shots, you're going to be really hard to beat. <laughs> they actually, I think they shot better on threes than they did on twos today, right. which is uh, pretty outrageous when you consider how they've been playing lately. But yeah, they were due. PJ Washington, fourths. I mean, and it was basically the people that we were wondering when are they going to have that game? Because Tim Hardaway Jr. and P.J. Washington combined to go uh, 8 of 12 from 3. Um, and those were basically the two guys that have been really mired in this in this heavy slump since the All-Star break. Uh-huh. So they, and you know, nothing, you know, there's nothing really to analyze. Like, they, they've been getting the same shots they've been getting since the slump for them started. They just, they made them. Like, <laughs> just make your open shots. There's nothing more really to say. And they got them. Um, but it, the the cascade effect of, of the Mavericks making their threes is they just get to mollywop these teams because they're still putting, you know, it's not like they didn't put pressure on the rim. Like, yeah, they made 22 threes and they still scored 44 points in the paint, which is uh-huh. a lot of points. Like, it doesn't sound like a lot, especially when you've seen the Mavericks score like 60 points in the paint lately. But 44 points in the paint when you take 39 threes is, is a lot. Um, they were still 16 to 24 at the rim, which is pretty good. Um, I mean, they I mean, they they gave it to him, man. I mean, they they absolutely pounded this team into the ground. I think Lucas started the game uh with a good disposition. He definitely knew that this was a big primetime national team. Like he had that look in his eye. Not that he hasn't been playing well otherwise, but you, there's you could tell there's National TV Luca sometimes feels different and, and it's sure. a little different in the first half. I think what he had 26 in the first half and, and then everything flowed from there, but uh, you know, the offense was great, but for me, I mean, the story of this game and the story of this, this, this winning, you know, nine of 10, it's the defense and Sacramento in particular is a team that has challenged the Mavericks defensively, uh, not just this season, but prior Luca seasons, I mean, the Kings pretty much get, took the Mavericks to the woodshed uh, in the, the two games they played. They were both before the trade deadline, um, but they still, you know, kind of dominated those games, especially with their scoring. And this team, the way the, the Kings uh, way the Kings play and their and their lineup present this present a lot of challenges because they don't have a lot of easy outs um, yep. on, on the offensive end. And Sabonis is great and does kind of the things that can give the Mavericks fits, but like. Lively and Gafford's length bothered Sabonis. Like, he did not look comfortable at all. And then, you know, the Mavericks kind of drop scheme, held up. They gave up some corner threes. They gave up some open threes. Kings, I think, started the game 7 of 15 from three, and then it, then it, the game got, kind of got out of hand. But the Mavericks, it feels like they're like, okay, you know, with the way we're playing, we're going to give up some threes. But we're not giving you anything else, and we're basically going to kick the shit out of you everywhere else on the floor and yeah that might mean we give up some open threes but like you're not scoring at the rim um you're not scoring in the paint uh and and we'll live with everything else we're going to force turnovers we're going to cause havoc the king shot eight of 16 at the rim uh they shot 11 of 30 in the paint outside the rim and when you consider you know the drop coverage kind of invites that floater range shot uh i thought the mavericks did a pretty good job with Darren Fox and some of the other guards and making sure that those looks weren't as clean as possible. Kings did miss some shots that they should have made, but like, yeah. I, I think the Mavericks scheme is holding up after that really bad losing stretch. I think they've just tightened things up and really like lively. Like I think a, a really good thing to look at this game is look at what lively did when he was on Sabonis compared to what he did those first two games. Like it's like a night and day difference. And I think that uh-huh. goes to show 
like just the team getting better, lively getting better. You're talking lively in the on earlier Sunday's. games against the Kings versus this game. Yes. Yes. It's a this nice is, night and day difference. I, I said something to a, a friend of mine that wasn't watching the game and he reports back. I, I was like, lively's a monster in this game. And he said back to me, well, he's got four points on five shots. What are you talking about? And his just largeness on defense yeah. was making an impact. Now, let's be crystal clear here. Sabonis can come back on Friday and just bury him because he's an all-star. I mean, he, he's going to be an all-NBA guy this year, I think Sabonis is. He has the longest streak of double-doubles in, in a bajillion years. Really talented player, great passer. I think the Mavericks limited his his passing a lot this game, which I think was pretty pretty helpful. Um, you know, there, there's kind of a there's a, a lot of chat uh, going on in our chat right now, like a lot of, a lot of talk about this element of the game. But one of the things that I, I think is just so beneficial is, you know, obviously the game's being called different. We all know that now, but like the Mavericks yes. are really taking advantage of the physicality and it's, mm -hmm. it's allowing them to do some things that they weren't earlier getting away with. And they're built for it in a way that I just, I mean, nobody knew that the game was going to be called different. Like it started happening basically February 1st on, but the Mavericks are really taking advantage of that physicality, like you know, the the Jason Kidd's uh, assistant coach ring that he got with the Los Angeles Lakers in the bubble. That Lakers team was fucking garbage. They beat the hell out of teams. They really did. I mean, it was three yards in a cloud of dust. Basketball on defense. You were not getting shots off. The Mavericks aren't doing that, but there's bumping going on everywhere, and it's it's good. You know, it's it's fun basketball because it doesn't feel dirty. It just feels intense. And and there's 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 a lot you you can take away from that. And Lively is one of the key beneficiaries from that because he uses his body in really 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 smart ways. Um, he's never overly physical, but he's just enormous, and he's in the right spot a lot, and that can make up for a lot. Like we saw, um, enemy of the program, Javale McGee out there on the floor in the final minutes. That was the fucking guy that the Mavericks opted to start last year. I just can't get over the difference in like what, you know, I'm really glad the Mavericks have, have turned around, but it's like, it was just such a stark reminder of where this team was like 18, 19 calendar months, uh, months ago with, with what they thought heading into the 22, 23 season. I'm just, I'm yeah, really pretty funny. I, I I'm on such a high from this game. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's I want to yeah. show everybody my ridiculous shirt and Josh, you get off your next point. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I want to stay with Lively because there's you were talking, and while you were talking, two things kind of rang in my head. The free throw thing and the physicality of the game, like that's such a huge deal for this Mavericks team specifically because what's been their Achilles heels on defense for like the last three years, they give up a ton of free throws. Uh. Like they've been one of the worst free throw defense teams in a while. What I mean by that is basically like opponent free throw rate. It was awful last year because they would get blown by and they had no they had no chance and they would just foul guys because they they got they would get beat so bad off the off the dribble or you know at the rim. Uh, now they're not getting called for as many ticky tack fouls, so to speak. Lively that especially helps a rookie. Uh, Lively had one foul in 22 minutes. You kidding? Like yeah, he's obviously getting better, but like I don't know if that. I don't know if that changes that that quickly. Like, you know, I don't know if the rookie wall can get scaled that quickly uh, without some help with some of the rule changes. And, you know, I think the game is better. For, like, I'm not trying to, like, shortchange what the Mavericks are doing. I think the game is better for it. And I, and I like watching the game uh, the way it's being called right now. But it's just helpful them because they've, they've had trouble keeping opponents off the free throw line. So that's definitely a boon. And the other thing is the length. Like when we talked after the la the Jazz game last night, we talked about how the Mavericks did a pretty good job on Sub on Jokic uh, in that win against Denver a couple weeks ago, and we were like, can they follow that blueprint against Sabonis, who is kind of like mini Jokic? Like they basically they almost play they play very similar styles, uh, and they kind of did, and they kind of did what they did to Jokic uh, in that win. Um, and really, like you think about it. Like Jokic, his only time he's ever really struggled has been like Rudy, like in that Wolves series in the playoffs last season against Rudy Gobert. And it's like, what does Rudy Gobert have? He is freaking long and enormous. Like the only thing that that makes that could be considered Jokic kryptonite is just outrageous length. And what does what does Derek Lively have? Outrageous length. 
Like, I just think that he's got a better understanding of how to use that length. Like, cause you know, you don't just have length cause look at what Sabonis did to lively in the first two games of the season. So like, clearly there's more to it than that, but like that length, like considering how good lively is between the ears uh, from what we've heard, from what he talks about, like from listening to interviews and from how the coaching staff regard, you know, regards him. Like you can't, there's a lot you can teach and he's, he's learned. He feels like he learned something new every game. You can't teach his wingspan. Like mm-hmm. he, he has some natural gifts, God given gifts that he's putting to good use and he's learning every day and he's getting better every game. Um, that just, you can't replicate. Like you just can't rep, like you just can't ask anyone else in this roster to do. Um, and it's just, it's fun to watch now that he's kind of putting the physical pieces with, you know, just getting better and learning. Uh, and I think you saw that tonight. You're absolutely right. All right. We're at about the halfway point in the show. Thank you for tuning in live. Those of you who are here, those of you who are watching on the YouTube stream, if you could go ahead and give this particular um, live show a like, I would be very appreciative. If you haven't subscribed to our show yet, please do. Josh and I go live after every game. And as often as I can, I do a secondary live show. Uh, I didn't do one last night, so we're going to do one tonight. For anybody who would like to stick around and come up and talk a little basketball with me, please feel free to. It's a very easy show to to join, um, and we like to have fun and talk a little ball. Uh, Those of you who are listening on the audio stream on Wednesday morning or or late Tuesday night, or I guess by the time it's published, it is going to be Wednesday, um, just uh, feel free to leave us a review. Josh and I would appreciate that. Uh, and anybody else watching the YouTube at a later date, please leave us a comment. Uh, the live comment shows are always very funny, but the the actual uh, comment on the video after the fact is is very helpful as well. Now I'm going to leave just a few seconds to insert some live ads, which if you could listen to those, you know, take the extra 30 seconds, Josh, and I would appreciate it. That's one of the main ways that we actually make a little uh, beer money off this. So we will be right back. Okay, so we've been gushing, and we're going to continue. Uh, <laughs> when you win 132 to 96, and you look at the box score and see that every single Maverick that played finished with a positive plus minus, even the garbage I, I, time lineup was awesome. <laughs> that's just—I mean, what do you do? It, it, it's—it's it, it's so not great, your night, Sacramento. <laughs> just, just not your night, Sacramento. Is—is is, you're right about that? Um, and there were even. Even some of the stuff that kind of like bugged me, like Dante Exum getting his shit blocked at the rim so hard that you heard, um, who was it here? You heard, uh, where is he? Which Kings player blocked him at the rim? Oh, Malik oh, Monk. Uh, Malik Monk. Yeah. Mal- you heard Malik Monk just absolutely destroying him and it was just even the stuff that was bad ended up good like it was just a comedy of errors for the kings shout out to master fame in the chat he left us a a tip we're really appreciative of that he says thj is so back so is the three-point shot you know there timmy drives me crazy but i couldn't be happier that he was hitting some shots tonight he also josh do you did you see how many helpers tim hardaway had tonight he had six Tim New Hardaway, turnovers. six assists, new point guard. <laughs> he had Fresh some pick, and they were like, he had some pick and roll dimes. Like they weren't just like him swing pass, getting assists off jumpers. Like he had a couple of pocket passes in the pick and roll. Well, they're like, doing the hell. And you know, the Mavericks are up to 11th in pace. Like Matt Moore, uh, HP basketball posted on Twitter. They're the like the points created thing the other day. Mm-hmm. Uh, shout out to Prince Singh. Another tip. Really appreciate that. That's fantastic. That was very kind of you. Uh, Matt Moore pointed out the points created like Luca's winning by such a laughable margin. It's like 13 more points created per game than the next guy. He's like at 60 points created a game. It's like something absolutely baffling. Um, and I was just sort of thinking about that in the context of one of the things the Mavericks are doing more and more and more is after a rebound, Luca is advancing the ball to mid court more and more again. Good God, but Billy coward with a massive tip. Bobby Chapman with a chip with a tip himself. Thank you guys. You guys are um, <laughs> making Josh and I's Whoa. month. Uh, really appreciate this. Look when thing. I when I said we oh, we like biz, business is good when the Mavericks are winning. I didn't. This really is mean what it. we this, mean. This, yeah, everybody's <laughs> happy. You know, it's it's uh, 
it's it's very it's very man guys you guys are grateful anybody anybody listening to the audio stream the next day is probably like what are these guys talking about well our live show listeners are tipping us money it's it's very kind we're ex we're <laughs> you know got a drunk tip it's fantastic billy um i can't even remember what i was talking about what was i babbling about oh my gosh i'm sorry uh timmy or the assists just um, just the you know oh the the way the ball's getting advanced yeah. to, to half, yeah, court, half court and they're yeah, yeah. they're pressing in these they're not necessarily numerically advantageous um situations thank you to uh appearance appear now or appear later <laughs> for another tip as well uh but Kyrie like took one like hilarious three in the first half that kind of made me yell at the TV because he missed it so badly but these the Mavericks are pressing in these situations where teams are not ready for it. And I think they they were kind of really pressing their advantage going for the kill shot against the Kings and it obviously worked out in their advantage. Um but this was this was one of those games where I just you sort of see all the elements coming together in a way that almost feels like cheating. I mean, the Mavericks aren't going to do this against the Kings on Friday, but the fact that we know that they have it in them to to you know play great defense while also scoring, um, it's it's just it's nice, man. It's really nice. <laughs> it is really nice, uh, and it's kind of like what we talked about when they beat Denver, like that third quarter run where Kyrie was just like, oh, I'm the best offensive player in basketball for the next 10 minutes and Mm -hmm. went on that heater. Like they've got two of those guys. And Mm -hmm. I I can't remember. I think it was on the broadcast. Uh, This is not an original thought. I'm stealing this. I can't remember who said it. I think it was either the, the TNT commentator, or maybe he was relaying something that that was said in a quote or something, but he was like, this isn't bat like Luca and Luca and Kyrie aren't Batman and Robin. It's Superman and Batman. Yeah. And I, that was, that was um, like, that's like the most accurate summation of this duo right now. Offensively. The, what did you say? You know where it came from? I know where it came from. It was from uh, our follower. He's joined the show often. Jordan Enos at hoop social draft tweeted that out about three weeks okay. ago. And it went super viral. The tweet did. It was a really big, it was a really, I saw it like on all the Instagram accounts to the point to where it's been repeated on TV. And it's just, it's, it's absolutely accurate. And, you know, I, I tweeted during the game, something, you know, a variation of it, which is like the Luca Kyrie bet over 48 minutes is that neither of them is going to get hot enough to break your game plan. That's, that's what you're hoping for on, on when you're guarding those two. And it just, Maybe somebody will figure something out. I mean, I was I actually asked this question of of some of the people who've been watching the games more. Like, why are teams continuing to like super blitz Luca? Like, what is going on? We thought we thought the Mavericks offense had been solved as recently as 10 games ago when he when Luca is in, <laughs> is getting like, okay, Luca, you go score 50, like it's you know, prime Amari Stoudemire, and we'll just make you tired. And now everybody's just blitzing him all the time. I don't get it. Well, they didn't start out blitzing him. I mean, they, Luca was, I mean, kind of just, I mean, he scored 26 points in the first half. Um, And I think they just kind of got fed up with it. Uh, And then Kyrie goes nuts. And then they, and then I think it just kind of goes downstream from there. Uh Um, So I think, I think teams, it's, it's one thing with a $20 tip. Good Lord. You guys are going to pay Josh and I's (laughs) child daycare. Thanks guys. Uh, yeah, we really appreciate it. It's uh, what was I, I trying to say? I think it's one thing for us up here to be like, yeah, just let Lucas score eighty points, and it's another <laughs> thing for like professional NBA players and coaches to like want to stick with that like for an entire game when you're on the floor. Mm-hmm. So I think that's part of it, and it's regular season, so I, I you know I, we'll see what happens in the playoffs. I would bet a team in the playoffs might stick with that strategy for an entire game instead of abandoning it, but. I mean, if Luca keeps scoring like he is, he's going to play these teams out of that, and they're going to mm-hmm. be like, "All right, well, that didn't work. Let's try something." Because the Mavericks had the lead in the first half too, so it's not like Luca scored twenty six and the Mavericks were down thirteen. Like the Kings needed, you know, the Kings going to halftime. They're like, "Well, we're we're down. We need to make something up." And then you know, floodgates. But up. they were blitzing Luca with two before half court. Yeah, I know. There were three <laughs> times where he was met before half court one of them was when he threw a pass to maxi and maxi just shit himself and threw it into <laughs> like one section funny. 132 row l like i if the I mavericks just, would have know. like lost this game in an alternate universe that would have been the first play you talked about when we at started. first i just yeah. just me and my me and me and my homie maxi with a 11 point 
one steal or I'm sorry, 11 minutes, one steal, one turnover, plus two line. Absolutely magical, Maxi Kleba. Thank Christ you played basketball for us today. Um, I'm just all over the place, man. You know, it, it, one of the things I, I think I want to highlight before we get out of here is just a real shout out to Kyrie Irving and just how Matthew in the chat keeps talking about this to how great a shape Kyrie is in. Luca only had to play 32 minutes. I don't think he had to play any in the fourth quarter. He was able to get out. Yeah. And for those who don't know, um, he is a he was basically a game time decision with a Achilles. And you don't fuck around with Achilles stuff like at all. And it's really quite incredible that that he played and then played well. And then the other Mavericks were able to close. And Kyrie was part of that closing lineup that really and it's just, you know, he, he's He's done the part of, of playing the co-star, and, and I really mean that. It's really fantastic. Quick shout-out to Brian, to Colton, and to Joe Biden uh, for some of the tips that are also rolling in here. You guys are absolutely cracking me up tonight. Um, what are we thinking? Anything else before we get out of Dodge and I head on over to the live show? I'm I'm just I'm I'm just kind of kind of exuberant at the no, moment. No, I know, and I, and I don't want to keep you up too late. And you haven't been able to do a live show in a while, so I know you're excited. I, I mean, I was up with my baby at 4:45. I, know, like, yeah. <laughs> I have had more caffeine. Like I I could see God when I close my eyes. That's how tired <laughs> I am. Yeah, I I just think you know I'm gonna be very curious to see what happens Friday um, because I think this game definitely did snowball. Not to say the Mavericks didn't earn every bit of this win. They did. No one freak out. But uh, I'm just going to be curious to see, you know, because the Kings are not a bad team. Like, let's not forget, by the way, the Kings did not, like, scuttle into this game, by the way. They've probably been the other, the second hottest team in the NBA besides the Mavericks. So, like, I know that they're tired, but they they have played pretty well in the month of March. So, they, so. It, this was a, such a really good win. I'm just curious. You know, this is a good team. The Kings are not a bad team. No. I'm going to be curious what it looks like with two days off and they're they're at home again. So, like, they're they're not traveling. I know the Mavericks aren't traveling either, but they're sleeping in hotels. And the Kings get this. Well, I mean, you just like, like Luca on yeah. the road for three days, not having to take care of a baby. You, there, you can't. Watch out Even for the reason Sacramento. For Sacramento is so, like, I've been to Sacramento because I went to college out in California. That town yeah. – Downtown is boring, but if there's anything I can convince that I can bet the Mavericks will do, I wonder if they like head down to to, to Sonoma. I, it, I I'm very interested. Hey, shout out to Albert for another tip. Good gravy, you guys. This is more money than we made all of last month. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's uh, I just uh, man. yeah. Well, I, I'm just curious to see what the because I, I love like I kind of this is probably the one thing the NBA has done with the regular season schedule stuff that I really like is I like these little mini series, like, cause it feels like a little playoff series and that's it's testy. Oh, camera's off. Sorry. I'm coming it's back. Been off. I was um, going to see how sorry. long it took you. Sorry. 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 Um, but yeah, it gets testy and you get to actually see adjustments cause you don't normally see a ton of adjustments in regular season basketball camera donations. So it just went off again. <laughs> sorry, everyone. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to be curious to see what yeah. the Mavericks look like defensively on Friday. Um, but like scheme wise, I mean, they're. I might have some 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 quibbles with with the way that they kind of just give up open threes. But if you're a defense, you can't you can't stop everything. Like there's no perfect defense. You have to give up something. And if they give up some occasional open threes, and they're just going to rock fight you in the paint, otherwise, uh. and they're going to cause havoc and force turnovers, um, then yeah. I mean, I want to see them try to do that again on Friday because really the Sabonis Fox dribble handoff Fox floater game is theoretic and with shooters all around them it's theoretically the counter to what the mavericks are doing defensively and the mavericks smash them like they just absolutely destroyed them so i want to see what happens friday i want to see if they can do it again and if they can i mean people you can i mean start start ordering championship banners or whatever because uh you know I, a no take would be too outrageous for me if they can if they could convincingly win on friday so uh, i'm excited to see what it looks like it's great stuff. Uh, sorry, y'all, but Dallas people shouldn't talk shit about Sacramento. Look, I've lived in both places. Well, I didn't live in Sacramento, but I've been up in Sacramento. Um, I, I 
compared to like Los Angeles or whatever. But <laughs> I, I, you know, it's, uh, I mean, there's I'm just at saying, least I was more, I was more <laughs> commenting on it from the fact of like Luca being able to get in trouble wherever possible. Like, you know, it's one thing he gets in trouble like on, on Beale Street in Memphis, but it's like, oh, it's like, where, where are you going to go to cap? Are you going to go to the state capital, Luca? What are you going to do? It's love it. <laughs> um, okay. So, uh programming stuff i'm gonna hold our secondary live show less than a minute after josh and i head out from here uh how do you join that show i'll post a link you will click that link you will join the show you will say your piece and we will let everyone revel in this win as much as we can josh and i did not next to we did zero standings talk if you want to talk about how the Mavericks are going to win the West, even though <laughs> that's not numerically possible, fine, let's do it. If you wanted to, you know, talk about a particular play, if you want to, you know, yell about Shaquille O'Neal being a just a a top tier hater on TNT tonight, we can do all of that and more. It's a little after midnight. I'm going to stay up late. Got at least another hour in me. Um, thank you so much, Josh, for joining us. Uh, everybody that yeah. is here in the chat, we will be right back when josh or when i join to uh um, to to do mavs party all right everybody thanks so much for hanging out we will be right back thanks everyone Lunatics, we're up after midnight. It is 12.06 a.m. on Wednesday, March 27th. Uh, you're joining me for the second part of our post-game show here live on YouTube. Those of you who are listening on this on the audio version, that's getting posted on Wednesday afternoon. If you missed Josh and I's recap show, please check your feeds and go back and listen to this. Uh, those of you who are here on the live show, there is a link that was pinned to the chat. It says join. It is a uh, StreamYard.com link. It is an easy thing that you can access via your phone, via your computer. Uh, if you want to show your video, great. If you don't, I completely understand. Would love for you to come talk basketball with me. I bring people up uh, more or less in order that I see them, you know, click into the show. Um, and then we will just kind of hang out till people are out of takes all right coming up first we have uh julio uh coming up here so welcome to the show how are you no audio just yet we'll give it a second i can hear some uh, static that's okay what we're gonna do here hey there we go how's that one second one second it's that's okay this one it's uh it's it's this is how live radio works is sometimes the audio doesn't work perfectly. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Okay, sorry, sorry. I was not expecting for you to to to, to get me to stay. Sorry, I I uh, gotta get better about leading people in. I get really excited whenever because sometimes I like gotta talk to myself for like five to seven minutes before somebody joins. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I the show. Yeah, thank you. I I'm a fan of your show. You are uh, very good at what you do. Um, I'm from Brazil, by the way. I was actually expecting just to listen than anything else. Can Can we so, talk for a second about your countryman Marcelino Huertas, uh, who now leads um, what is it, Liga a ACB? He is the all-time assist leader for for the Spanish ACB league as of two days ago. Did you know that? I did not know that. I, I am a search. I am a huge. Um, I have followed Brazilian national team basketball for close to twenty years because I went to high oh. school. I went to high school with Marcelo. Uh, he played a year here in Dallas. Weirdly, so I I love Brazilian basketball because they've put out some of the most unique players in, in NBA history. 
Yeah, um, I to be honest with you, I, I do not follow Brazilian basketball yet. I do not have the time. Sure. Um, yeah, I started following NBA 2017 playoffs. Woo! Yeah, it's, it's, re it's really new for me. And uh, the, the reason why I'm a Mavs fan is because of that, because I started watching NBA in 2017 and then Luca was drafted. And Luca is just amazing. And I was like, fell in love with his game. And here in Brazil, most of people is either a Lakers fan, Boston fan, um, some of them Miamis. Sure. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But I, I never I never met nobody that is like a Dallas fan. Sure. It's just just me. <laughs> hey, that's okay. Well, we're glad to have you here. I'm really glad you joined the show. Um, what'd you think of tonight's game? Oh, I was surprised. I was really nervous about the about the game. Um the, the Kings, they, they 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 beat the crap of us the last two games, and I was like, okay, mm -hmm. I, I really respect them, honestly. I think they are a, a playoff contender. Um, and uh, I was like, okay, the first two two quarters was really really tight, and uh, I was like, oh, is this going to be one of those games where the the Mavs are like getting those small leads? And then they just can't keep up, right? Right. And then the third quarter was like, looks like a G League game. We're like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that like Kyrie was, Kyrie was was you could tell he was frustrated that some things didn't go down for him in the first half, and he just came out ready to go. And the door was shut. That game was all but over with six minutes left in the third quarter. It was just a great... I, the Mavericks never do this. They never close third quarters. I usually... Third quarters are usually the time when I get the most mad as a Mavericks fan because it's like, God, why did they fall apart? Only for tonight, they really came through huge. Yeah. I think the the addition of Gafford and, and P.J. Washington was uh, much better than I was expecting at the beginning. Um I understand why Kid is putting Gafford on the starting lineup instead of uh, uh, DLive. Yep. Gafford is more experienced, is more matured as a player. I do believe that DLive is going to be a better player when, sure. when, out, when one else hadn't done. Um, but it's this past, since the, I don't know, I don't know if I can say since the break, but since, I don't know, the last 10 days or so, Mavs' defense came around. And this is a really, really good sign. Uh, we are closing to the pay playoffs. And if, if, if our defense is like that during the playoffs, and Luca on the playoff is, is God mode always, I think we have a chance. I mean, and, more than a chance. I wouldn't yeah. want to play us. I would not want to play this team if I was any of the top teams above us. Just because the Mavericks are capable of such frustrating lows, but they're also mm -hmm. incapable mm -hmm. of just running a team off the floor mm -hmm. like tonight. Even Denver. I think I so. Think, I think Denver is the best team in, in, in the West by a, a significant margin. Yeah. And that's that's the team that scares me the most. But even Denver, I think they don't want to play us. Nobody wants to play us. Um, you, you you know the, the team that I uh, I want to see, I would like to see us play is is, is the Clippers. Sure. Just sure. just to get some revenge. <laughs> well, there's a there's a so I'm um. I'm a bit of a nerd, and I really like reading all sorts of different. I I read all the time, and and you know, there's a, a pretty classic kind of like Western like st like story um, structure, like the heroic journey, and you, you kind of got to go through stuff before you can elevate and become great. And yeah. I would argue that the Mavericks are on that upward trend. And just for a storybook type ending, I would really like to see them play the Clippers too. I'm also just scared to hell because uh, when Kawhi Leonard is good, he's he's just terrifying. He's a machine. So it's like 
I'm both yeah. for it, but I also am a little like, yeah, I don't know about that one. Yeah, yeah, no, I feel you. Um, Kawhi, when we played them, we played them two years in a row, right? Mm -hmm. And we, we lost two years in a row. But we, we're also, the only team they've actually beat like well enough. The the only time the Clippers have looked good is when they beat the Mavericks. Is is my takeaway? Yeah. <laughs> Kawhi had to play his best bas basketball in his life yep. to beat him because of Luca. Mm -hmm. That's how good Luca is. That's so right. I, I would like to have some revenge. But you know, the other team that I, I, I also would like to, to, to see in the playoffs, sure. I don't think we're going to see is the Suns um, because of that uh, Booker Luca beef. Yep. I mean, I respect the Booker's game. He's an amazing player. I don't like his character. I don't like. <laughs> <laughs> He's a fun. It's fun to have somebody to root against. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I like I like this. Um, how do you say that? I forgot. But I, but I, but I like like uh, this 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 Mavs Suns rivalry. Rivalry, that yeah, is, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, rivalry that is, that is building up. Uh, so the Suns is the other team that I would like to see, but I don't think we are going to see them. No, they, no, they they're, are really they're, bad they're falling, they're falling behind. Yeah. Well, my friend, I really appreciate you starting off the show. Um, I got nine other people down there I got to get to before I go to bed. At least, and at least anybody else is welcome to join. Thank you so much for joining us. Is there anything else you'd like to say before I uh, head on to the next folk or person no. on the show? Nothing else. I'm really appreciative for um for, for your taking me in and thank you very much. Absolutely. Glad to have you as a, as a as a as a friend of the show. We'll talk soon. Have a good day. You too, sir. Okay, now we have to have on somebody, even though he has on a friggin' Los Angeles hat in a in a Mavericks podcast. Uh longtime friend of the show. I cajoled him into coming on only because he is uh out there on the mean streets of Twitter fighting the good fight. Jason Gallagher, how are you, my friend? What's up, dude? I'm I, I, I produce a podcast with the uh, the Los Angeles based basketball player. Now, this is what I've got to do. I get it. Pandering is pandering. I, I pander, so you know it's just it's part of it. That's what you got to do. Speaking of, I do uh, want to plug the podcast really quick because sure. of something that you said with Josh earlier Okay, uh, about why teams are blitzing so much. There is a nice five minute discussion in which LeBron and JJ just wonder aloud why the hell teams are blitzing him so much. And then talk about how it's actually just a riddle because if you did then decide not to blitz him the way that Atlanta did, he might just drop 73 points on you. Um, and so the video that is publishing tomorrow is called Guarding Luka Doncic is a Riddle. I hope you guys check it out. That's it. I like it. I like it. So what did you think of tonight's uh, tonight's game? Yeah, it was freaking awesome. It's like the, it's the kind of game. I mean, you and I have watched so many of these these Mavs games. It's the kind of game that that shows that we're a different team. You know what I mean? Like, yes. Um, just sort of, it was clearly a grind for both, given that both teams are on a second night of a back to back and yada yada. Um, and to come out and just just kick ass, uh, yeah, I don't know. You don't get that very much. You don't. No. You, you, we haven't gotten that very much, and we've seen over the last couple of weeks different kinds of victories. And you again, you know what I mean by that. Uh, last night was another great example where it's like Luca doesn't look awesome like it, it, it's it's it just felt like a grinded out kind of game and and again we're we're winning games that that we should win we're winning games that we shouldn't win <laughs> we're winning games that against tough opponents we're winning games on the road we're blowing to like we're, we're getting different kinds of victories and i like that a lot i certainly do and you know as a, as a longtime fan of the dallas mavericks i personally ascribe to finishing in the right place, finishing playing well, finishing mm -hmm. in a good frame of mind. A uh, friend of the show, Seth Part now tells me I'm completely full of shit uh, and that that doesn't exist. But after watching the 2006, 2007 Dallas Mavericks, I completely fucking disagree because that team finished on a blarg state after going, you know, winning a bajillion games in the regular season, I think 67 wins, and then they lost in the first round. Like, I just think heading into the playoffs, playing great basketball matters. 
I think it matters for some teams for sure. Like I think you know doesn't matter for Denver clearly. No. I think it doesn't matter if you because they've been there something. before. Exactly. Yeah. But for teams that are on the up, it really I I subscribe to that. It's very, you know, it's 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 yeah, it's it's almost like the hot hand theory, but for wins. <laughs> uh, I like Jeremy in the chat identifies you as this the most favorite is is Gallagher the most famous Mavs fan after Patrick Mahomes? We're gonna go with yes. No, no, isn't Post Malone a, a, a Mavs fan? I guess so. That's Fine, a, I'll not take a bad one. No. It's, it's anyway. George Lopez. George Lopez. <laughs> he's in the he, in the 2006 or in the 2011 finals, or it's a, it's 2006. I don't remember. He's in the. I have this great big print, and George Lopez is in the bottom right because he's yeah. in the front row of all those games. There's a lot yeah. of like really obscure celebrities that were like Mavs fans for like a second. Like Jamie right. Fox is a really good one. Like, <laughs> what happened to that? I thought you were our guy, Jamie. You were at the parade. He was at mm-hmm. the parade. And he didn't, and now all of a sudden he's not. Anyways, um, yeah. So that's that's how I feel. You know, I'm I'm here as always to mm-hmm. push the agenda that is not being pushed enough. Sure. And I um, am, you know, I work on a basketball show, and I sit behind the camera, and I listen to people talk, and I listen to people talk about other players, and I listen to people gloss over Luca. And I feel like I'm living in the twilight zone sometimes. It really, it really does feel like that because, and I keep making this point because everyone, you know, ESPN is ESPN, but there's so many smart people, not just on my show, but all over NBA Twitter that have taken the time to find information that I literally, if you gave me a million dollars, could not find myself. Mm -hmm. How do you know this type of metric when it comes to an individual's uh, uh, impact on both the offense and defensive end, and then also weighs in when they're on the, you know, whatever, like so much information. But then at the end of their sentence, they'll say, uh, and also, uh, you know, they're, they, they're the two seed. And you're just like, wait, are you, are we really just doing that? We're I really like to just- describe that as it's like, you know, in high school, how you had to show your work on all your math problem. Like you yeah. had to like, write. It's, it's, it's showing your work and then getting the fucking answer wrong. It, it, like, it, it, how it do you really, do that? It really is. And, and, and so I, I think that that, well, I was trying to construct why Mavs fans are so, so frustrated with this sort of discourse around Luca is that it feels like people are doing everything they can to make an excuse for him to not be considered. And it's kind of weird because that's kind of the only, at least for me, that's the only thing I'm trying to push is I mean, that he each- needs to be in that conversation, like embedded deep, yes. deep, right up, right inside people's core of this discussion about MVP. And the fact that he's not is actually like a slap in the face to nba history it it is people 50 years from now are going to look back and say you guys were morons more i I think that's true i mean yeah it's true every every nba every mvp race is different and like i personally think the joel Embiid mvp last year is going to look fucking ridiculous despite the fact that joel Embiid actually closed the regular season in a significantly better way than than um, Jokic did. The closing of what has gone on, and we still have eight games to go. The whole yeah. season matters. It's not a 70-game a award. It's an 82-game award. And sorry, Shea, Shea Gillius Alexander is not finishing strong. He's not, he's, a- not, he's not finishing strong. And not only that, uh, it, 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 it begs the question of, of again, we've, we've, advanced so much as a society i cannot believe Mm -hmm. that we can't look at these at these two teams throughout the entirety of the year and ask ourselves why does oklahoma city have five more games or six Mm -hmm. more games than dallas it's all the health and 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 it take it might my literal child could explain why yeah but For for some reason they people gloss over it and i was sitting through a recording at one point uh and and my guy one of my guys on there he said he said something about um the on off numbers of blah 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 and then and then he had said something about the seating and and he he questioned luca's impact on winning and then he went on to say luca's uh you know the mavs have lost 
four of something like five out of their last nine games or something. It was when they went on that ter- that winning st- or that losing streak a few weeks ago, right? Yes. And I was like, that's a weird cutoff point to say to say that he's you know lost five out of their last nine, right? Mm-hmm. Is that not a weird cutoff point? We, considering that they had no, actually it's, it's, won um, eleven out of their last sixteen, you it's could do searching. That it's too. searching for something. To, and this, to back up this is why people, and I try to say this, sure. it's, this is why people think there's an actual agenda because it's, we're well, looking I mean, there at, is an agenda. It's not it people think like there it. is a fucking agenda. <laughs> there is. And that's why yeah, I'm Tim Bontemps. Shamelessly... Tim yeah. Bontemps. I, I would qualify him as a, as an internet friend. He talks about this thing. Like it's a, like it's, it's, it's a, he calls it a narrative award. Well, he, when he's you, so, he's so full of shit. Well, as a media member, you're he's, driving like you're just, driving that narrative. You're driving the agenda. You are doing that, and I and I think that's the biggest cop out within media right now. Are these internet? Is the are these media people that sit there? I'm sorry to go full blown like freaking like whatever Ben Shapiro right sure, now. Fine. But but the, these these media people talk about themselves. Like they are someone else, right. and they go, "Well, that's how voters like, vote." We we and it's like, anything. "You yeah. aren't, aren't you the voter?" Like, and he does these, like these, these straw polls, and he's the one deeply like impacting these polls. It's just, it's just outrageous, and it, yeah. it is like, um, all you have to do is say, all you have to do is say, the Mavs were banged up. Sure. Luca's best player for almost a month was Dante X. No, like, like you're trying to boss. tell me that Jokic and Murray is the same as Doncic and Exum? Is that is sure. that where we and are? Your your former boss, Bill Simmons, can't fucking say out loud that Luca was playing without Kyrie for 25 games. Like he cannot say it. Nobody it's like can complete, say it though. He's like, he's well, not Kyrie's alone. missed some games. And he's it's like, not oh, alone. The- wait, wait. I I I am happy to talk. Sh- talk shit sports shit no no but he's this he's the one where it's like like this stuff is available go look at the game log there's a big chunk where Kyrie didn't play didn't play and there's a big chunk where you know a, a legitimate like lineups being played where if you swapped Luca for Shea mm-hmm. I can't even imagine in fact I can't imagine because we've seen that scenario and we've seen how the Thunder finish when that scenario is in place. Sure. So just saying when you're like, and another, th- the, the last, we sound like I, such grievance mongers right now. I, I am a grievous. Monger. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm saying it out loud guys. You can say all you want. I'm saying it right now. The only thing I disagree with you about is the Embiid thing. And the, the big reason is I am for, and I feel this way about uh, championships too. Usually if it's, if Dallas or, or Luca are not in the conversation, I like to cheer for things that feel like they've earned that and i think Embiid over the course of course of three or four years has played well enough to earn himself an mvp at some fucking point and that's exact i think if not to say that that's the only thing to consider but when you look at the players that are available the players that are available who have not won it is luca then ten thousand feet of nothing then the next best player. Sure, that's where we are right no, now. I don't. I don't like the up and order thing. I mean, le- to me, it's it, let's just see how the rest of this regular season closes. I'm a historian. I hope it's a Kirk. fun. A I hope it's a fun vote. I, I, that's what I'm hoping for. Oh, is I'm hoping it's not some. It's gonna be hell. That's fine though. But if it's like some, if it's like some, you know, like thirty, thirty, like like three way tie, like the scene in the office, like that's fun for me. Like that's at least weird. This whole unanimous voting block stuff has to go. Well, all right, I've kept you babbling for too long because you are you are willing to fight this fight more than anyone else on the internet right now, and I really respect it because I am just not good enough at it, uh, despite me being just so surly all the time. You're great. Um, at this. Do you have do you have any 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 other passing thoughts uh, before you you head back to uh, to real life? Because I think you were on a quasi vacation coming back from this game. I was. Um, no other passing thoughts. This is this is a fun time, and I was I was reading some of Matt Moore's tweets, and I think that the Mavs schedule is deceptively can be deceptively harder than we might think it it could. So many be trap done. games. There's way so there's opportunities teams. to let down. Yeah, for a sure. lot, a lot. So I am excited to watch some Mavs basketball down the stretch. And the good news about this team is, I think even if they finish in the play in, which hopefully they don't, but if they uh-huh. do, True. I still think that they're good enough to. Uh, you know, 
play any of those top seeds, even let, you know, Denver would be tough, but that would be an entertaining season or series. Couldn't agree to more. Be honest. Yeah. So Couldn't that's agree it. More. That's it for me. You're Folks, the man, Jason. Goodbye, Kirk. All right. Talk soon. Jason runs multiple NBA podcasts. I'm not even going to bother like trying to list them all um, here. So if you're waiting on joining the room here uh, there, I can only have 10 people in the waiting room at any one time. Now I am punted Jason. Now we got nine. So if you want to try to join again, uh, be my guest, we're going to try to bring up people. I'll try to be a little quicker with folks. I haven't talked to Jason in like three weeks. Um, I see some names that I don't recognize. So I hope my regulars aren't bothered. I'm going to bring up Ken next. Who's been waiting patiently. And then we're going to go with Jobo. Ken, how are we tonight? Great looking hat. How's it going? I'm having uh, a great time. Awesome. Yeah. Long time listener. I talked to you one time, probably like three years ago on the good old Spotify live. Gosh, I missed that. I'm the Los Angeles Maverick fan. We talked a little bit about that. Um, Been been a fan for 20 years. Cool thing. I went to my first Dallas Maverick um, American Airlines Center game and I had it. I was going for work a few weeks ago and I had um, Indiana Heat when we're on this losing streak on Tuesday or the or, or Indiana Pacers or um, Miami Heat. I'm glad I chose the Heat. That was the game where the first half I was shaky. I was like, man, we're 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 playing like shit. That was the get right and, game. And then we 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 went on that winning streak. So that was my first um, in American Airlines Center game, which was awesome to to see the Dirk statue and all that fun stuff. But yeah, just wanted to come on here um, because I listen all the time and I you know I don't get up I, I don't get up here, um, but. Watching this team for like 20 years and there's and just watching the NBA so much today felt like that the just the look in uh, Kyrie's eyes and and Luca and the whole team like the chemistry part, you know, it, it definitely gave me the the vibes of uh, two years ago, but even like a little bit more like of a uh, fuck we're starting to really believe and play for each other. Um, and it's just kind of cool to see right. Yes, because we've all been through hell. Uh, the last couple of years, um, and just the um, the defensive intensity, um, and having two big cent- centers like Lively and um, Gafford, um, and and how we're using our power forwards, I'm um, like PJ to um, you know place a bonus, and then having them as the back line of defense, um, it's just it's just a breath of fresh air. I mean, I think if anything, I'm not the biggest Jason Kidd fan, but y- you have to kind of ask yourself. You know, we went through that losing stretch. We weren't playing good rotations. There was this meeting, right? Um, and they did kind of corral around him. And yep. Luke and Kyrie love him. And everyone's kind of corralling around him. So, you know, as much as he's not, you know, the best X's and O's guy, got to give him some flowers because they're all, you know, playing for him. And Luke and Kyrie look focused. Um, and I'm excited, man. I think I think definitely we have a shot. The only the only team I'm I'm kind of scared about. Um, obviously is, is Denver. Sure. Um, but other than that, I think we have a good chance if, if we're healthy, if Kyrie's playing like this, he looks motivated, man. <laughs> he really does. He looks, he looks good. He he's playing such a sharp role. Um, he seems to know when to go like my, my 40 years old. And I still remember when my high school basketball coach would yell at me. He used to scream, he used to scream from the sidelines, know when to go and know when to whoa kind of thing and and Kyrie just knows when to knows when to really exert his will on games it never ever feels forced uh whereas sometimes when like Tim Hardaway shoots you just want to like chunk whatever you're having to drink at the television but it's 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 a great time to be a Mavs fan um so much of this one of my I mentioned this earlier in the show but one of my friends was like why are you so excited about this I'm like because we've like had some really garbage losses like this is fun and especially the diehard people that literally watch like i watch every game yes you know it's like a lot of our time right <laughs> and it really is so, it really is and it's fun we, it's fun to have fun yeah these kind of and, and thanks for everything that you and, and josh do for you know i mean the amount of hours that we spend listening to podcasts on the maps is kind of hilarious um but it's a huge part of my life and thank you for making it entertaining um uh, because yeah it's 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 in my bloodline and it's just good to see these guys uh, going forward. And, and yeah, I think the wrinkles in the second half of how Luca and Kyrie played, I don't know if you guys noticed it, but like they're doing a lot more actions and everything oh, yeah. is just so much like the assist totals the last mm-hmm. like few games. Um, it's a lot of playing for each other and less Luca ball. It's everyone knows kind of what to do. And I think that has a lot to do with 
you know, 40, 40, 45 minutes of a, a big center as well, always rolling. I think Max even talked about their defense, why it's better too, because they actually all kind of know, okay, we're playing this one type of defense instead of sometimes you have Lively, sometimes you have Maxi, you know what I mean? It's a little sure. bit sporadic. It's just the minutes. It's the familiarity with one another. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so well, things are looking good. I'm stoked. I won't keep you long. I know you have a lot of people up here, but thanks for letting me on, my man. Absolutely, Ken. I hope you come back. Uh, I'm, I'm, it's probably weird watching a game at a normal game time for you and, and instead of having to watch like one at, at six o'clock in the evening or something like that. Yeah, you guys are oh. crazy ones staying up to like one or two in the morning. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm good at like 10 o'clock. I'm, I'm going to sleep. <laughs> That's great, man. All right. Have a good day. We'll talk soon. Right. Bye, guys. All right. Coming up next, I see a couple other uh, from, um, folks that I haven't seen first. So I hope my, my regulars understand. Um, we're going to go first to, uh, how you doing, Jobo? What's going on? Hey, doing well. How about yourself? I'm, I'm having a great time. Thanks for joining us tonight. What are you thinking? Uh, well, first, I just want to say uh, shout out to you and Josh for for doing these late night shows. I know, uh, I know it's late hours and uh, largely thankless, but uh, you know, for no, it's fun. Junkies, it's fun. I, we really appreciate it. it. I, I really kind of you to say same same for Ken Ken before. You know, it, it's more thankful than you'd think because the you know I lived. Um, like so, we had uh, we have Julio who's there in the chat, who is in Brazil. I was a Mavs fan. I lived, you know, after I, I went to College of California, lived in Virginia. I didn't know any basketball fans, so it's like finding people that like the sport that I like is very important to me. Even yeah. here in Dallas, like I don't run across that many Mavs fans in real life, um, just because it's such a Rangers town, and there's uh, people have yeah. options. So it's 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 really nice to it's it's fun for me it, it, it is more thankful than you think it's 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 something i look forward to doing it gives me energy to kind of push through the rest of the regular season so i'm i'm, I'm glad to be doing it as well so so what are you thinking tonight cool man i just keep thinking back to that Derek lively third quarter defensively it was i think that was the best i've seen him on defense all season um and i thought there were some moments in the first half where not that he was bad but it was just like I felt like I saw so evidently why Gafford maybe needs to be the guy in the starting role over Lively. Sure. Just a couple of things that are rookie things, you know, body control when when guys are driving at him and he's leaning in or jumping at guys. Um, but I mean, he was locked down in that third quarter. It was yep. it was getting me fired up. Um, and then uh, I texted my buddy after the first quarter had started. PJ had hit a few threes. Derek Jones Jr. hit a couple threes, and and I told him, you know, if this if this holds, we finally have the Mavs three point shooting regression game that we've been waiting on. And lo and behold, I think that was a recipe to to just kick some Kings ass. It it, it helped them hold the line in the first half uh, because the Kings are just so punchy. Um, and I really thought the Kings were going to make a run. And then in the third quarter, obviously Kyrie's play just really helped blow the doors off. It was great. Yeah. Yeah, and the fact that Luca didn't have to play the fourth quarter, wonderful. My favorite wonderful. kind of Luca play, my, the weird, get like two and a half man game that him and um, Gafford have, where like Luca will find him at the rim, and then because Luca will just also the be at the rim, immediate pushback, <laughs> right? Which like feels like a three second call waiting to happen, but yeah. it's like the refs never call. It's like, oh, he's getting the ball right back. This is amazing. Right back up. Uh, it was right. great. It was great. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think I have a whole lot other than that. It's amazing to see Derek Lively where he's at at 19 years old. I yes. uh, can't wait to see what the future has for him. Shout out to Tim for hitting shots and to just keep chucking even when it's been, it's been a struggle. I think it was it six assists for Tim tonight. Something amazing. like that. I mean, he's, he's making plays, finding ways. So, um, I'm really just interested to see what this all looks like when Josh comes back, but enjoying the wins for now. That's right. Well, thanks so much for joining. I hope you come back. Yeah, thanks, Kirk. All right, talk soon. All right, coming up next, uh, one more name I'm, I'm le or f face I'm less familiar with um, is Matt down there. Matt just joined, so I hope my, my regulars aren't too mad at me, but um, I, I want to encourage people to come back here on the show. Matt, how are you? What's going on? How you doing, Kirk? Having a great night. What are you thinking tonight? Uh, I've never thought I would say this. Uh, can we give Jason Kidd some credit? I mean – He's been coaching his butt off the last couple of weeks. Um, I kind of didn't see the maxi thing, but after tonight, I know he didn't play that the best, but they just look so big with him in there. I just, it helps, yeah. It just he, he's coaching his butt off right now. I know he's going to get us annoyed, and I mean 
I don't know. I just think he's doing a great job. Never thought I would have said that like, after a couple weeks ago. But I mean, I'm just I'm really pleased. Like, you're right. I, I I was always a little reluctant. Like when when Nick Angstad, who's you know he's a positive fan more or less, uh, kind of called for the the, the firing kid. I remember being a little surprised because like I figured I was going to be the first dumbass to put my name out there like that. Oh, I wanted him gone too. Yeah, yeah. And I and I still sort of wonder kind of what the end game is. But right now. If you're coaching when it matters, you deserve the credit. And he is. He is like he's a little more active in, in all elements of things. I also am just really pleased that he's utilizing the Maverick size. Going small has been his crutch for several for the past up until they got these new guys. And I, I think there's a time and a place for it. But these Mavericks playing big physical ball is what is is what is closing games for them in an effective manner. I mean, it's obvious. I mean, like I know the three point shots are falling, but I mean, I, I don't want to get in this conversation, but how much bigger do they look like without Josh out there, man? It's just crazy. No, it's, it's, it matters. Like, I don't think Josh Green has a place in this rotation, but I don't really want to worry about it until it becomes a challenge because I think with the minutes distribution among those kind of two and three guards, if you're playing every guy like 15-ish minutes, you're going to use him in some way, shape, or form because there's games when he's going to have it and there's games when he doesn't, and that's fine. You know, it's, it's, it's too long of a season, too long of a postseason. You know what I mean? No, definitely. And I, I, I mean, I kind of, we're all, I'm like Mavericks Twitter. I wanted to kill Timmy and send him off the face of the earth, but you kind of <laughs> see it. Like, I mean, I mean, it, he, his offense when he's hitting and I mean, I, I think this is the two best games he's played as a Maverick because I know he had all the scoring outbursts, but like pure basketball, he looks like a real basketball player, not a chump, but that's right. Um, last thing before I get out of here, um, this might be another crazy statement. Is it weird to want to play the Clippers in the first round instead of no. playing Nor Minnesota? No. I, I'm not scared of them at all. I'm not scared of them at all. It's it's you know this is you're, you look like a young man, but there's a ridiculous scene in the original Home Alone where where Macaulay Culkin runs outside and like screams to no one, "I'm not afraid anymore," and that's what I feel like with the Clippers. So if you want to punch them in the mouth, I completely get it. I mean, the size is just crazy. I mean, I don't want to. I mean, everybody's saying it, but this team is really scary. And I mean, that's look, right. I'm, I mean, Luke. I mean, one last thing, real quick. Luke getting rest in the playoffs. I mean, remember those Clipper series and even the Western Conference Finals. I mean, I know Golden State was just better than us, but remember we were in those games. I think it was like an even net rating when Luca was on the court. And as soon as you took him off, like, look tonight, you're gonna give Luca. You get six to eight minutes of rest in a playoff game. Yeah, like it's scary. But have a good night, Kurt. I'm glad your dad's doing good. I saw the tweet. Oh, thanks, guys. man. Yeah. Yeah. He just is. He's home now. He's resting and he doesn't understand why he can't do stuff. And we're like, dude, you had heart surgery. Stop being an idiot. My dad had a stroke a couple of years ago, so I know how. Enjoy it while you can, man. Enjoy everything. Have a good night, Kurt. Thanks. Thanks. Talk soon. Of course. Okay. Um, now I think we got, oh, we got one more new face down there. It is Mr. Green. We're going to bring Mr. Green up. How are you doing tonight? Yeah, I'm well, Kirk. How's yourself, mate? I am great, man. We got, we have one from Brazil. Where are you calling in from today? From Perth, Western Australia. Fantastic. This is, I love technology. So, so what did you get to watch this game today? Yeah, mate. It's 1.42 in the afternoon. Well, still, but it's a, it's a Tuesday. So it's, you know, some watching a game for some folks in the middle of the afternoon would be a pain in the ass. <laughs> hey, come on, come on, mate. Like, you know, only suckers are working, Kirk. You should know that. <laughs> yeah, you know, there is times to, you know, watch the Mavericks during the day. Um, but, mate, glad we had a win. But I'll, I'll tell you one thing that really amazes me about watching this team now, the athleticism, the speed. Scary. It's great. Been waiting, been waiting how long? How many years have we been waiting for some, you know, My whole life. players? My whole yeah. life. Man. it's um, They can put some scary lineups in there. Um, and, look, you know, I, I know a few people are wondering where Josh fits in when, when he comes back, man. But, you know. Who cares? Worry about it when it happens. I, I yeah. think there's a place for him, but I don't want to. I'm not just like, who cares right now? Exactly, mate. Um, it's just so fun to watch these guys um, be able to attack it. But, man, God bless having Kyrie Irving on your team, man. He is an absolute killer, eh? Unbelievable. Yep. He just cuts through the lane. And, man, they're scary. Nine out of the last ten, and uh, they've been playing well. Um, just wish Luca would maybe suited up for that OKC game. Yeah, um, but mate, how, how do you think? Um, how do you think we're situated now? Because the race for those uh, guaranteed playoff spots is heating up, and looks like we might sneak up a couple of pegs higher if we're if we're lucky. 
that they have the they control their own destiny. And so that is enough for me. I'm hopeful for the sixth seed. I'll be pleased missing the plan, quite candidly. I know everybody else is is probably going to want more, but my goal from the beginning of the season, what I wrote, I've checked this, was was avoiding the plan. Everything after that is a bonus. I think most Mav fans picked the Mavs to finish, what, between the third and the fifth seed? Sure. I mean, and, and that's because we're all very happy. But, I mean, the Western Conference this year is – like, I saw this the other day. Um, the Lakers, and this is before they won. I want to say they were like, they're like 30, they're, the Lakers are, I'm going to go check the standings right now. Um, the Los Angeles Lakers are sitting at ninth in the West at 40 and 32. And that would have been good enough for basically fourth in the West last season. That's how much more competitive the top half of the West is. So it's like, you just kind of got to take what's there. And, and so if they were to manage to get to five or somehow get to four, then I think Luca is really, truly an MVP like at that point, but that's just, that's a byproduct of them playing well at the right time and squeezing through. I mean, it's, I would rather, I would rather just, you know, just, I'm not going to bank on anything, but they, that, that they can control where they end up is pretty exciting. And what, what do you think our most challenging game is moving into this last segment of the season? Because we still have some, uh, we still got two against golden state, but you know, so I think we can I, just I think we're just so much bigger than everyone else now, Kirk. We are the Rockets. Athletic. This is a ridiculous thing for most people. The Rockets sort of freak me out because they are playing really athletic basketball. And so they yeah. with how they've been able to put up points, I think they're kind of a trap game for the Mavericks. I mean, I definitely think the Mavericks are better, but those the fact that they have to play them twice in what is it? Twice in basically eight days it just uh, closing the rockets out would be pretty important to me that that's like a, a big trap game situation for me um I and then worry, i don't worry too much about the rockets man i mean when you watch their games it's fred van vliet that seems to be doing a lot of the damage and just put Kyrie against fred van vliet and who's sure. got the most numbers at the end of the game i, I don't i'm not too worried about the rockets i'm Love not it. too worried about um golden state for the next two games. Um, man, I think we're going to have a, a strong, solid finish and um, just get out of the way because I, I think they're, they're getting the confidence now, man. Yes, they look like are. it. You can, you can see it in them. And um, I was waiting for the another 10 to 0 run to happen in today's game. Just didn't happen. Didn't happen. <laughs> it was great. It was absolutely great. Well, thank you for uh, for hanging out and joining the show once again. Thanks, Kirk. Appreciate it, mate. We'll talk soon. All right. Talk soon. Okay, coming up next, we have our, our very loyal band of listeners. I'm going to go to uh, – I told uh, Henry he could go next, but Sam's been waiting forever. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go Sam, and then I'm basically going to go in order there for those of you who are in the, in the waiting room. Sam, thanks for waiting. What's up, man? What's going on? Can you hear me, Kurt? I, I can. I really appreciate you waiting this long. This is the most new callers we've had in in a long time, so I just want to give people a chance to talk. It encourages oh. them to come back, so yeah, it's grateful awesome. for you waiting. So what's going on? Oh, no, no great win. I, I, I want to say this. So I think the Denver game was obviously the best win, but I think this is the best statement win, if that makes sense. It does. As far as, I mean, everybody knew this is the biggest game of the year so far, and just the way they came out and just – Pretty much from like the middle of the first quarter, I just dominated. Mm-hmm. I mean, I wasn't expecting that to be honest. I was thinking it was gonna be a nail biter to the end, but if you can play like that, everybody's been saying it. Luca and Kyrie, when you got those two going, if everybody else just steps up, sky's the limit. Um, Julio said it like in the beginning. Everyone wants to play the Clippers. Listen, bro, I have PTSD. Like I don't want to play <laughs> like because even last year, when, I think when they played the Suns. If Kawhi doesn't get hurt, I think they beat the Suns, personally. Yes. Yeah. I can see it. Uh, you know, hey, y'all, y'all begging for it. Like, I know we'll be better, but if you got Kyrie playing like he's playing, like I said, and Luka, obviously, he's playing like he's playing, sky's the limit, and I think we got a chance to beat anybody. I don't want to play Denver, but I think we could beat Denver. Just I, I think it'd at least be fun. I mean, my standards after missing the playoffs last year are making the playoffs this year. You know? Yeah, 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 Everything yeah. after that feels like a bonus. Right. I mean, the goal is with the playoffs, but now with the trades and everybody's playing the way they're playing, we actually got size. So if you could just just get in, I mean, I think personally, I think we could beat OKC 
I won't say handily, but I think we could beat them pretty good. Mm-hmm. Uh, Minnesota, they'll be tough because of their defense, but I think we could beat them. Denver, obviously, they're the defending champions. You Minnesota know, series would be just so aggressively whiny between oh, yeah. the Mavericks. <laughs> <There's a lot laughs> of- we'd, we'd have Rudy Gobert accusing you know anyone he could think of of in between him and Luca complaining about the refs. It would just be atrocious. Yeah, but Ant was- Edwards, like I just I love Ant shit talking. Him and Luca for six or seven games would be amazing. Oh yeah, it would definitely be entertaining. But I think the Mavericks, you know. Oh, I certainly think they win. That's not a question. Yeah. Because at this point, I mean, we've seen Luka in the playoffs now, what, three, four times? And he hasn't had a bad postseason yet. So, <laughs> I mean, until that happens, you just got to go in there saying, okay, we know we let's play on the floor. It's just if everybody else just steps up. So, yeah, yeah um, like I said, great win. Now, obviously, everything could be undone on Friday, and then this might not mean anything. But, <laughs> <hey>. <laughs> That's right. We'll take, we'll take it right now. Take it right now. So that, that's that's exactly good. right. All right, man. Talk soon. Thanks so much. Have a good night. Okay. Coming up next is my man, Henry. Henry, thanks We're for shaking, waiting so long. What's going on? It's all good, my guy. I actually expected this, actually. It's um, nice. It's nice. The, People are excited. Uh, that what was the stat? Uh, t- 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 oh, when you hold Sacramento under forty six points in the paints, they're four fifteen. That's fine. And uh, I have to do go. I have to go back and take a look at what they were. But I know we hold Sabonis down. I think he was eleven points, ten rebounds, nine assists. Mm-hmm. Um, I wasn't expecting what three four from PJ though. Shout out to PJ for finding his shot. Did you see the rebounds for PJ? You know what I mean. Thirteen Shit. rebounds. Good. Like, it's it's taken me almost an hour and twenty minutes to mention his rebounding. It was insane. He hit it. Timmy hit it. I mean, I still want Timmy ship to Bangladesh, but for tonight he was uh he was hitting, so I'm okay with he, that. He gets a day pass. That's yeah, true. that's it. It's day by day. No ten day contract. It's twenty four hour contract. That's it. Did did you see the did you see the best Kyrie Irving stat and uh, that I of of my life? It's my favorite one of the season. No, I was still at work with the client. I probably missed it. What's up? Kyrie got a dunk. It is oh. <laughs> his fifth dunk of the season, which is where did I where did I do this? It was. I was so excited. It is the most dunks he's ever had in an NBA season. Yep. Ever. Yep. He's, he's what, 31? Like yeah. Yeah. There's, he's there's just getting healthy. Time. He's just getting healthy. Again, I told Mavericks fans to relax. This isn't even playoff Kyrie. Like, relax. Fans. I don't know. This kind of These last several games feel like he's in an octane. You know, oh, yeah. he, he was he was kind of if if you missed the first half, he was very frustrated with his own misses, <laughs> which doesn't normally happen. And so it was it was really like the third quarter. He was just a like a just mm-hmm. a he was a death squad. I mean, he yeah. he just put an end to the to the entire Kings game. It was great. Yeah, he's a walking flamethrower. Like literally at any moment, I'm not even worried about it. He just came out and just said, "Yeah, yeah, you guys can't fuck with us." So night night, rock you to sleep, like. He can it's literally do that at any moment. So it's it's well, I'm not too worried about it. As long as we don't match up with Denver before the Western Conference Finals, I think I'm all right with pretty much anybody not to worry about the Clippers. Um, I'm not worried about – damn sure not worried about Phoenix. And, again, I'm sure we've hit on this before, but have you seen Phoenix's last next 10 games? Brutal, isn't it? Or am I, every, right? I think everyone has over a 60% win rate. Everyone's top five, like – and they just lost to the Wimby List Spurs. I am not yeah. surprised if we see Sack at seven – Maybe the Lakers eight, and then nine and ten is probably Golden State and uh, Phoenix. Um, no Lakers for you, even though they did just they they they, they pulled an all out crime tonight, beating the Bucks. They they had it was amazing. Yeah, it's fine. I'm I, I don't I don't think very highly of them. And you know, <laughs> Dame was choking. Giannis traveled. They didn't call it. Those two are the most heavily free throw differential teams in the league. So yeah, I knew that game was absolutely going to be awful, but. <laughs> As long as we can avoid Denver until the Western Conference, I think we do fine. Um, Sacramento is going to be the same result on Friday. They don't have a big outside of Sabonis. Um, so as long as you limit their points in the paint and the transition, they're pretty much like Memphis that year. They were the two seed. Sure. I'm not too worried about it. So, and um, just as a bonus here, I really hope Golden State misses the playoffs because their fan base is fucking insufferable. Mm. Um, anytime you beat them and say, you guys are in a 10 seed, they just say four rings. So it's actually, I just, I hope that they lose just because you can't argue with them. Because even if you make sense, show logic, they just say four rings. And that's all they can see. Such a bizarre. No, I wouldn't do that. I, I uh, And we still get to beat them two more times. So I'm looking forward to oh that. Oh my God, we're going to destroy them. 
it's good stuff man well thank you so much for thank you so much for waiting you got anything else tonight uh is there in uh, is there any bracket set up where we don't match up with denver in the second round I haven't checked it close enough because I just I if I standing if I start standings watching I really fall into a like a pit. It's all good. You know? It's all good. Yeah. Bold prediction here. We uh, I'm gonna go with the fourth. Fifth is pretty is too easy. I think we end the season fourth seed. All right. Appreciate you joining. Love the enthusiasm. Talk soon. All right. I almost kicked myself off my own show. That shows you how tired I am tonight. Um, NBA scouts on Twitter asked a question. Kirk, I have a question since you're a journalist. I am not a journalist. Thank God. Uh, why isn't Kyrie showing up on the NBA stats leaderboard? My best guess to this question is it's a games played element. And he had, even though he's played a ton in a row, that's got to be the main reason why he hasn't uh, shown up on the thing. All right. So we're going to go Micah, Krishna, Brian, and Leo. Micah, what's up, man? Mike, unmute yourself. What? Yeah. What's going on, Kirk? Oh, we're, um, just, uh, we're just here. Yeah, this was fun. Um. So, first of all, so let me start with this. <laughs> yeah, and hey, your audio is kind of. Oh, is it? Is, is this any better? Kind of sounds like a headset-related issue. I don't know why. Try it again. Hmm. What about now? Ah, it's much better. Thank you. Okay. But yeah, just shout out to what Jason was saying. And to me, I don't think it's like a conspiracy. I just think most people in media don't watch basketball. Oh, sure. No, they, they will look at box scores. That's that. Uh, yeah. And then they, it, they, they look at box scores and they watch like three minute highlights. Like, you can tell between different analysts who are actually watching games. Like, if they tell you something, like, as soon as they say that, you now shout out to him, he had a great game tonight. But when they're saying that what the Mavericks strategy should do is figure out how to get Timmy involved. Oh, shout out to Michael Wilbon, one of the worst takes of the millennium. <laughs> so they're not watching basketball. Like, I like if you listen to Tim Legler, just you can tell that he's watching the games. Like, and then several people I do playbacks with, like, yeah, they can tell you everything about about the team, what issues are here, what they see. This, but you listen to a lot of media people, and like, you're not watching games. Sure. So it's not a conspiracy. It's just they don't watch basketball. It's like. They report about something that I don't know if they even like. <laughs> I can feel that. But, um, but yeah, this was fun. Um, we've been, like we've been so much better defensively. That's Absolutely. like because when you think about the like, of course they stink on defense, right? But. <laughs> <laughs> when, when you when you think about the firepower of Sacramento, yeah, to hold them hold them under a hundred points, right, and then not too long ago to hold Denver to one hundred five, it's like the that's like defensive performances against top high octane offenses. So it's just we're finding other ways to win. That's the exciting thing about this team. So. Um, I like their chances with anyone. Um, yeah, I would love to see the Clippers again because please let me see the team that with 10 games left in the season, their second and third best player are saying we don't have an identity and then their head and then their head coach following that up with, oh, we have an identity where our identity is we're soft. Loved it. Yeah, let me play. Let me play that team, please. That's right, man. That's right, man. I gotta be honest. I'm fading like a rock. Do you mind if I head head on to the next guests? Yeah, man. Uh, I gotta get some sleep too. Sure, when it man, comes we'll soon, okay. All right. Uh, have a good night, Kurt. All right, later. All right, coming up next is my man Krishna. Krishna, what's up, dude? Thanks for waiting. You're the best. Kirk, how are you? I am. I am all of a sudden very tired. But uh, but we're gonna we're gonna keep pushing. 
That's good. That's good. Um, man, what a weird game. I, I had emotions even before because I was like, okay, Luca's probably not going to play the whole game. Time time decision stuff was a little scary. And I almost was like, if Luca's not playing, I think it's probably a loss. Sure. Like, played. And the fact that he was he was so good in that first half, which was shocking. Like you could see him kind of limping up and like, I don't know, sometimes he hams it up a little, but yes, found it very funny. And then man, that third quarter. The funny thing is, I feel so bad. I missed like three minutes of the third quarter. And then I came back and I was like, how did the lead just grow to this much? And that's right. It, it's just awesome, Kirk. And and it's funny, you know, I don't think I said it, but it feels weird that this team has switched where you know, you've talked about it with Josh so much that this team's calling card was, you know, you have to make the three pointers. Otherwise nothing else goes like the team doesn't defend. The team doesn't do anything else. That's important to actually winning basketball games. And in a weird way, the team's calling card is playing defense and scoring in the paint. Um, Like I think Nick Angstad was talking about it a few times. The Kings, when they score less than 45 points in the paint, they've never won a game of the season. They scored 38 tonight. Now, Part of it is probably they were, you know, in garbage time. Right. But Mavs have been seriously dominant in the paint in a way that I don't think we've ever seen. Like, really, we've not seen this with at least the Luka era we've never seen. I think maybe you can go back to the Dirk days, especially because of spacing and how the game was played. But and I think it's a formula that's working in the sense that, you know, I get it. Three point the three point shot is important. And it, this is not me saying that teams should just move away from the three pointer or that you sure. have to play one or the other, but you have to be a really balanced team. And I think that's what this team is becoming. And as guys become more consistent with three their shot, I think that helps. And really, this is like a game that they could have had all like this this entire second half of the all star break. Sure. Where if you just had a little bit better shooting luck in some of these instances you probably have a few more blowout wins. And this was just for some odd reason, this was the game where it happened, but it, I don't know. It feels good. Like there was not really much. You could look at this game and say, Oh, they were horrible. Like at, early in the game, they were kind of getting killed on the rebounds, but I think specifically lively made such a great adjustment. He just was yes, he so much more physical in that third quarter. And I it, 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 you can see it clearly bothered Sabonis like more than Gafford lively clearly bothered Sabonis in that third quarter and it kind of just took him out of obviously the third quarter is what took the Kings out of the rest of the game but it just took them out the whole time and in a weird way you know obviously Josh was mentioning in your regular show but this Mavs team is now large and it plays a physical brand of basketball which is not something I would have said and the thing that makes me because the worry I had with this team, honestly, with this more transition and high pace style was I look back at those Grizzly teams from the past two seasons and they played that very high pace transition style. But I think the difference with this team is when you have Kyrie and Luca being your primary creators, you can play half court ball like better than most teams could even dream of. And so I don't know, there's just a lot of confidence going with this team and it's awesome. And hopefully it continues and hopefully the fans keep enjoying it. I don't know. The season looks like it could be a really great one. And I, the, the crazy thing is even next season looks like there could be great things. Which look is, at you looking ahead and being all excited. One of my group what? chats, everyone's like, I wonder who we can get in the off season. I'm like, we're going to go to the NBA finals. Everyone shut up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I find it interesting. You know, the, the legends like are actually going for a playoff spot, which I don't think they ever have in my no. lifetime. Yeah. They're and always then, a circus show. Yeah. And, it's so weird that these past two years they've been taking much more seriously. And like with the ignite shutting down, it kind of reminds me of like team continuity is important, but team construction is so complicated and we like to think it's just putting talent together, but you you can see with the legends roster and this roster to some extent too, you need guys who one have experience, but you also need guys who just have energy. Sure. And the legends roster, I think has kind of done that. Like Omax is, I think he's gotten a lot better there. And I think part of that is the legends are, it's not just like a team, right? It's not like he's just playing minutes, but he's playing on a functional team where you have guys who have experience and who can do things that he's not able to do. And it lets him grow, but it also gives him like a certain baseline. And that's something I don't think we ever would have saw from this Mavericks team. Forget about drafting players, (laughs) just getting guys on that team. And so, there's just a level of baseline competence that I haven't seen from this organization in years. Like it feels like it feels like this team drafted Dirk. It drafted Dirk and it drafted Luca, and somehow nothing else was competent about right. this organization. And it's like, oh, 
this is what happens when your organization does the bare minimum to be good. Right, just like trying. No, for oh, sure. It's great. It's great. All right, hey, man. Well, thank you so much for hanging out. Let's talk. We'll talk soon. All right. Night, Absolutely. Man. All right, we're gonna go next to Brian. Brian, what's up, dude? Thanks for waiting for so long. My my normal show starting correspondent. Uh, I'm bringing it up like an hour into the show. What's going on? Uh, man, I'm just you know, just finished watching some basketball, having a good time. Uh, we beat up on that Lithuanian thug. You know, it's a real good time. Smoked him in the paint because he he was he was he was up to his usual thuggery in the paint. I saw it. We saw it. He was throwing elbows. He was swinging them around, doing what he usually does. Didn't matter. Derek Lively, Daniel Gafford, uh, PJ Washington had 13 rebounds. They went in there. They were doing the job. Luca was holding them off, you know, from getting good post position when he would get switched on to him. It was a fun time. We, we were just too big for him. They couldn't handle us. I loved it. Loved it. Don't think I've ever heard of Sabonis referred to in such a hilarious fashion. Oh, nah. <laughs> I, I got I got more on him. <laughs> <laughs> so let's save it for Friday's game. Let's see what he does then, right? Yeah. But yeah, no, I'm just uh I've got to give Jason K credit. Yep. The uh the shock collar therapy with Tim has borne fruit. He hit shots tonight, which helped, but more than that, even as he was making shots. He was avoiding taking bad ones for the most part. Like he said, he's still going to take a, a few bad looks here and there, make a dumb decision to transition. But right. there were plenty of times I saw him get ready to load up. Uh, uh, and uh, LT's in the house, type three, where he was getting ready to pull up from 30, and we didn't need that. Or he was getting ready to pull with 18 left on the shot clock, and we didn't need that. And he kept himself in check and held it, moved it, got it back later, you know. And I think that, wouldn't you know it, holding him accountable for the way he was playing on the court and cutting his minutes helped him round his shot selection in the form of it in a way that's a bit more palatable to what the team needed. Right? Sure, sure. And so doing that, where he was cleaning up his shot selection even at the games where he wasn't making shots, leads you to a game where he can be really efficient in like 21, 22 minutes, right? And right. just hit four threes, do the job, move the ball, got six six, uh, six assists purely off of just like not trying to hold the ball any longer than he needed to. Yes. And it was really fun to watch, man. Dante Exum and Derek Jones Jr. were flying around doing the best they could on Fox. He was unstoppable in the first half, but in the second, it just, it was too much for him. We just had too many bodies kind of to throw at him. And once we fixed what we were doing, as far as that drop that we were playing, that was letting him get all those little midi floaters and gloves that he was. Right. Because he loves those shots and he was burning us with them early on. But once we got a handle on that, and he couldn't get all the way to the paint because once he did that, mm-hmm. Lively was in there, and there are, he there just got sick of staying lively. Like I, at the first part of the game, I thought Lively was challenging shots a little too recklessly, but him just like that must have clearly been part of the game plan where he was just at the peak of all of those floaters, and the Mavericks sort of gambled that he wouldn't make them all game, and he didn't. Dude, and then in the second half. I'm not sure Derek Lively has played a better defensive game. Agree. Maybe the uh, few minutes he played in that Spurs game when he came mm-hmm. back from the uh, the nose injury, he had some bonus in Alcatraz. He, sure. I'm talking multiple times. Sabonis posted him up, swung those elbows, trying to get a chicken wing off, and he might move Derek, but he wasn't going far. The hand stayed up. He didn't bite on any of those stupid pump fakes, and he <laughs> pinned him right under the rim, and he had nowhere to go with the ball. It was, and he did it like three times in a row when we went on that big run in the third quarter. Oh, it was beautiful. Oh, great stuff, man! It really was. It really was. Yeah, I'm just, I'm excited about this team. I'm happy that we put a win like that on that team. Yeah, they're really in that good. Situation on national TV. 
Yeah. Right. Like they're they're not. They, we, we have our qualms and our reservations about the Kings as you know a program, but they're a talented team. Yeah. Really well coached, and that we could do that to them in this situation where we both needed the game uh, was really encouraging for me. And so I'm excited to see, you know, yeah. they can look like on Friday. I love it. I love it. All right, man. Thanks for hanging out late. Of course, dude. Thanks for having me. All right. Talk soon. All right. Coming up next is Leo. Leo, what's going on, dude? Hi. Can you hear me? I can. You sound great. What do you got for us? All right. Two quick hitters. One, uh, as far as off-season acquisitions go, do you think so uh, far in this year anyone's okay. better than DJ uh, D. Jones? Uh, is anybody doing what now? Has anyone been uh, like a better acquisition for another team for like a price point than D Jones has been? For no, us? he's been too. He, like him and Dante Exum are got to be kind of rivals there. Do so. you think we'll be able to sign him again uh, come the off season? Yes, because but you know I I don't know how it'll work, but I'm looking forward to them trying. Okay, and then just to look ahead a little bit up to Evans, the games that the maps have right now. are the Kings again, Houston, Golden State, Atlanta, Golden State, and Houston at 3 o'clock. And then if we look forward, we have the Clippers who are going to be playing uh, Orlando, Sacramento, Denver, Utah, Cleveland, and then New Orleans who are going to be playing uh, Milwaukee, Boston, Phoenix, Orlando, San Antonio, and Phoenix. So we're going to be uh, Orlando Magic fans for here on out, Mavs fans. We sure. need to hope for that fourth seed going forward. Sure, man. Thank you for having me up. Of course, Leo. Talk soon. All right, guys, I hear my baby crying, which is not great, but we're going to go to Ahmed and then Ryan to close this out. Ahmed, you there? Welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for having me. Can you hear me? I can. Thanks for uh, for coming on. What's going on? Uh, thank you. I, I, I've just been uh, checking out the stat leaderboard for for a while now, mm-hmm. and I, I just noticed that Kyrie Irving is nowhere to be found. I don't know why. I mean, on all the websites, and I, I checked there is some players who have less games than him. I figured maybe it's because he hasn't played enough games. But he has 25 points a game. I, I, I was just wondering, since it doesn't make any sense, but I don't know my, why. My guess would have been, my guess would have been the, 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 the playing thing. And so I don't actually have a great answer for you in this regard because <laughs> I don't. Because it's like on the you know when you see a lot of the stats in game, that's probably the one that that, that stands out. Like you know, the Luca, the combined Luca Kyrie points sort of is something. But that's that's something I've not that I've not noticed. Um, let's go to the points. I'm on NBA.com right now. Uh, yeah, so, let me see here, Kyrie. Yeah. He's not on the thing. Yeah, that's have- weird. You have Tyrese Halliburton, who has definitely played less games than less him. games, yeah. So that's, a big... th- that's one thing you have. You have, for example, uh, yeah. I've seen. I mean, like two days, three days ago, I've seen some players with forty nine games or or so. You have Terry Rozier fifty five. I don't know why. Yeah, so here's here's what I want you to do. Do you follow me on Twitter by chance? Yes. Shoot me, shoot me a DM after this is over, and I will ask around tomorrow because that's a weird one. That is, oh, yeah. I, yeah, like I'm on this thing. You're right; he's not showing, he's up. showing up. Yeah, he should be. He and it's not like he's averaging something low. He should be tenth right now. I think. Yeah, he he averages. Uh, it's, no, not tenth. I think he should be. Uh, he averages mm-hmm. more than Damian Lillard, so he yeah. should yeah. be fifteenth. He averages more than Anthony Davis. That's like something good <laughs> to see for for your players. So I would just. It just That's hits so me weird. Hard. I've been checking for the last three weeks, yeah. and every time I'm like, okay, it's a game thing. But now I'm like, nah, that that doesn't make any sense. And that is so <laughs> strange. That's an interesting <laughs> thing. Well, thanks for pointing out. I'll look into it. Oh, uh, thank you, thank you. And yeah, I was just gonna reiterate the point of the previous person. I I think we have a really good shot at the fourth place. I mean, looking at That's... the schedules of uh, Clippers and uh, New Orleans without BI, I feel like they can they can easily lose four to five games. Same thing for Clipper, the way they've been playing, and also the competition. And all the games they have are against teams who can't lose and not going to be resting players because they're still fighting for playoff position, sure. position, and for 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 for, for Dallas, uh, other than Go- Golden State and Atlanta, uh, not Atlanta, Houston, I don't really see any even the last game against OKC, they're probably going to be resting a lot of players because they, they by that time, they probably have locked in the first or second seed. Right. So hopefully we make it. And yeah, 
I, I don't want to hear any talk about off season because we're gonna win the chip. It's That's right, man. <laughs> I love the attitude. Good right. we'll night. Take care. Like your contact. Thank you. Thanks for coming up. Hopefully you'll come back soon. All right, Ryan, you're gonna be my last guy, and then I gotta go take care of the screaming five month old I can hear. What's going on? Hey, Kurt, can you hear me? Okay. I can. Awesome. Yeah. So um, I know it's pretty late. I'll try and keep it short. That's okay. Um, yeah. The reason I'm on here so late is because I was actually at the game and I was. Woo! Um, yeah. Um, so I live in the Bay Area. I'd been keeping an eye on like the standings, and I was wondering, you know, maybe if tickets are all right, I'll make the drive up to Sacramento. And Great day call. Off and, oh, am I glad I picked this Tuesday game, Kirk? What an atmosphere! When I tell you that it felt like the playoffs, I've only ever been to one playoffs game. That was. I was in eighth grade in like 20. I've never been. That's amazing. That. It was, it was really like, it was that rocket series. Um, I think that was 2015 and it was the game that JJ Brea kind of went crazy. If mm -hmm. you remember, I, mm -hmm. anyways, it was like the one win we had, uh, we lost four one, but that was like a key memory for me. And I mean, it was loud. Um, you know, the Kings don't get a lot of national TV games when the PA guy said it like four times before the game, like this right. is a national TV game, get your towels out, whatever. That's, that's um, funny. But the crowd was loud. They were ready. Um, they said something about how, like, let's show these Mavericks what a loud arena looks like, which I thought was pretty funny. Um, but look, so this was um, a playoff atmosphere and it got shut down really pretty quick. Love it. Um uh, like the this was my first time in an away arena watching the Mavs. Um, I've only ever watched them at the AAC, and like the people next to me were just speechless at just like the shot making that was on display. And obviously, this is not a game to game thing, but it just speaks to when you have two killers on your team, and we say it over and over again what a luxury! Like the way they can just deafen or they can just shut down like a deafening crowd within mm -hmm. the span of a couple shots, the momentum, you could just feel it shift. So obviously <laughs> they, they're just, they're just nails. <laughs> like they're screaming for their, there's one, um, they would do the crumble cookies or something promotion where if they miss both free throws, right. So they're screaming and they're like, Oh, Lucas sucks, whatever. And you can just see it in his eyes that he's nails. He's nails. The entire he loves time. That it's stuff. just, just as a Mavs fan, it's such a like smug feeling to be sitting there. And at some point, you don't want a front run, so I just shut my mouth. Um, uh, everybody, tough one day up, or something <laughs> like that. Um, but, but oh my God, like you can see it in their eyes when they're at the free throw line with Kyrie and Luca. Like these guys are killers. We just got to get them to the games that really matter and let them show us what they can do. Like, Oh my God, how exciting. So a couple quick takeaways then. Um, before the game, I sat there for like an hour and a half watching warmups kind of snuck down. Um, that was pretty cool. Nico talks to everybody, but more importantly, PJ, like no one told him that apparently NBA players don't miss in warmups because he misses every shot in warmups. Um, he really looks like he the... has a vision problem when he's shooting. Like it's like, and that's what made his, his make so incredible because when he misses, it's like, oh no. Yeah, his, his misses look different than everyone mm -hmm. else's misses, too. Like, uh, he has a lot of those in and outs, but often he'll just, like, they'll take high bounces off the back rim and not, like, the good back rim miss. Regardless, it's um it's really funny to watch when you're watching, like, a slumping Maxi who's half injured, figuring out if he's going to play, hitting 75% of his, you know, warm-up jumpers, and PJ is just, like, he's got a real fluid motion. Anyways, it's been, we've talked about it a ton, but... We went into the game, and I was talking to some Kings fan I met next to me. I'm like, oh, don't worry. He can't shoot. Like, they're going to leave him open. <laughs> and lo and behold, like, I was just, like, about out of my chair. Like, no, he doesn't do this. I swear. Not 25%. Yeah. I mean, it was it was really, really something. Um, another thing, I know we've talked a lot today. I was kind of listening on my drive down about um, Tim having a good game. I'll say it. In person, it really didn't feel like a different Tim. It just felt like Tim was hitting some more threes than he usually would. But I feel like if he hit two fewer, then, like, we wouldn't really maybe be talking. Maybe this is just me not being as informed. But he still took some ridiculous shots to the point where even the people next to me were like, what What was that? People who don't watch the Mavericks. <laughs> um, it's befuddling. I, uh, Nick Angstad from Locked On talks about it a lot, about yeah. how Jason Kidd leaves him in on the defense for offense possessions. And he just looks completely lost on all of those. He did it again today. It was like, I think, the end of the first quarter. So, you know, some of that stuff, whatever, we could talk about it forever. But I just maybe, you know, to let you get to your baby and Cap <sighs> Knight, I think, 
um, you know, watching Luca is such a privilege and we say it enough and I am up in arms just like everybody else when it comes to him not getting love from the national media about MVP and when it comes to all the nonsense that we kind of have to deal with as Mavs fans sometimes. Yep. But other teams don't get to do this. That's the Kings right. fans there were defeated when they saw Luca especially, but even Kyrie, just two killers where you know that they're inevitable, like Thanos inevitable. I love it. So it was just a ton of fun. Um, I'm so excited for the playoffs. I've been listening forever, by the way, and this is my first time on. So Well, thank you for uh, joining. I, just, I figured today would be the day. Yeah, thanks That's so a much. a great time. I yeah. All right. Good All night, right. Kirk. Good night, Ryan. Okay, guys, this has been a lot of fun. Thanks so much for hanging out. Remember, if you're, uh, you know, go ahead and, and like the stream, leave a comment on the YouTube. If you're listening on audio, go ahead and leave a review, that sort of thing. Five stars. Really appreciate it. Josh and I will be back on Friday. Everyone uh, have a great rest of your week and go Mavs.